it's a brand new season for the ADAC GT4 Germany. Race one of a 12 race season. We kick off here at the Oschersleben Motorsport Arena after the shortest winter break in the history of the series. Hello everybody, welcome to Oschersleben. Conditions are absolutely perfect. The sun is shining. We have a massive field of cars, the largest field to date taking part this season in the ADAC GT4 category. Air temperature is 17.6 degrees, track temperature 25.1, wind 7.1, which means conditions are absolutely perfect for racing. And it is an all der front row for the first race of the season. Phil Durr on pole position with Ben Durr, his brother, alongside the number 69 car and the number 007. Guess what brand they are in. It's Aston Martin 1, Aston Martin 2, and a Toyota third on the grid. Uh, in the hands of uh, Marcel Lanez, uh, the Piro Sports Toyota GR Supra lining up third on the grid. There are uh, six different brands of car on the grid. Numerous drivers. You can see how packed it is. This is going to be one exciting season. I'm very pleased to say that I'm going to be sharing much of the season with my co-commentator, Adam Waller, Weller, who sat alongside me. Adam, you must be so pleased to be here at Oshersleben to witness this. It's going to be a historic season, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we've seen this series go from strength to strength year on year. And once again, I mean, the GT4 concept worldwide is not just picking up steam, uh, but the kettle is boiled and is now overflowing. There's so many GT4 cars uh, competing in every continent on Earth, with the exception of Antarctica. And uh, absolutely wonderful to see ADAC GT4 with such a strong entry list once again and so much driving talent packed up and down the grid. There really is. Let's have a look at some of that talent. Here comes the grid. It's Phil Durr on pole position for Durr Motorsport teammate and brother Ben Durr. This could be awkward over the dinner table tonight if this doesn't go well on the front row. Marcel Lanez, a defending champion. Gabriel Piana for Hofer Racing by Bonk Motorsport in the BMW on row two. Thea Overhouse has really impressed in qualifying alongside Mike David Orman for Pro Sport Racing. Those Aston Martins are up the front, aren't they? Mick Glassborn and uh, Nikolai Moller Madsen line up on row four. Of course, Nikolai Moller Madsen, a previous winner. Marcel Marchevitz and Vincent Andronaco line up on row five of the grid. Row six of the grid, which will magically appear, magically appear has another Aston Martin, Simon Connor Prim, with Jan Philipp Springop. He's uh, jumped from Audi to Mercedes alongside Nico Gruber, who's moved over from TCR Germany. Uh, Tom Kiefer for Allied Racing lines up alongside Pavel Lefteroff, a uh, driver who showed so well last year in the uh, GT4 category. Then Ewan McKay, in another Aston Martin with Robert Haub. Keep an eye on him alongside in the Drago Racing Team ZVO Mercedes, a team that came out of the Ashes, not the Ashes, but came out of Zach Speed. Uh, Julian Holzem uh, shares the Door Motorsport car with his brother alongside Alexander Hartwig. And then on row 10, Ferdinand Winter and Leo Pistler. Uh, Pistler and Vassather are no longer in the KTM crossbow. They've moved as well. Max Kronberg and uh, Max Rosen making it an all Max row 11, row 12, Patrick Steinmetz and Yevgen Sokolovsky. Good to welcome the Ukrainian here. Uh, Joachim Bolting had a uh, torrid time in qualifying alongside Axel Sartingen. And then the uh, back of the grid, Josef Knopp and Lucas Meyer uh, bringing up the rear of this grid. A crowded grid here at the Oschersleben Motorsport Arena, a circuit that is 3.667 kilometers around, 14 turns, seven to the left, seven to the right. The crowds are back on the terraces. This is great. The atmosphere is electric. The roar of the cars as they exit the final turn of the circuit and head towards the start line. The five lights go green. We are racing. The doors race side by side, but it's the number 69 of Phil Dorr who leads into the turn, but the Toyota trying to come through on the outside. It's Dorr 1-2 at the moment. The cars shuffle around the hotel turn corner that 
is difficult at the best of times at the start of a race. They all make it around by the looks of things. That is no mean feat in itself. It's currently uh, Phil Doerr leading the way, but uh, up into second place. I'm just trying to look where the Toyota is. That is the Toyota into second place. Uh, so uh, the uh, Marcel Lanez car doing really well up into second. Ben Doerr dropping down into third. Defending champion Gabriel Piano into fourth. Uh, it is a crowded track out there. They're all pointing in the right direction at the moment. That is some achievement in itself. Really spectacular sight as Phil Doerr leads the way in this opening lap. So Aston in the lead with the Supra separating the two of them. It was a good start uh, from our second place man. However, it just looked like more than anything it was helped by the sheer grunt of that Supra. It really did take off uh, as they got underway. You saw Phil Doerr just weaving down this straight there. And I, I'm uh, wondering whether he was trying to generate heat, whether he was trying to break a toe. Uh, but it was quite uh, interesting to see him at this early stage just weaving down the straight uh, uh, as he leads the way, riding on board with defending champion Gabriel Piana in the hope for racing by Bong Motorsport BMW M4 and uh, looking to the outside uh, ducks back into the queue overtaking really difficult here at the Osterslebern Motor Racing uh, Arena into that corner that you just saw is the best overtaking opportunity at the end of the pit straight in towards the hotel turn uh, that is the scene of uh, many an incident and that is the man is that and I'm trying to work out which car is one of the Mercedes Getting That's Overhouse from fifth place. Oh dear, so Overhouse. That was very strange. That looked more like a failure to me than a mistake. It looked like maybe a broken toe link, but all the wheels look like they're pointing in the right direction. I want to see a replay of that if possible. That was very strange. It was, uh, I have to say, at the heart and the mouth, the, uh, the drone camera was zooming down on it and uh, we could see it as it was unfolding. Uh, the rest of the pack did really well to avoid him. Now, I'm hoping he can move from there because if he can't, uh, we're going to see a safety car coming out in this opening race of the season. Uh, looking at the moment, he's still stationary out on track. Uh, the 85 car pointing in the wrong direction and uh, we might get a safety car at uh, any moment here it comes the safety car is out because that car looks as though something has broken as you said uh, he is now stranded facing the traffic and uh, that is a definite brown alert moment for uh, the driver when uh, you've got the cars racing left and right and you're just pointing towards them uh, but the safety car is out uh, we are less than four minutes into the new season let's have a look and see what happened he was on the inside of the uh, BMW. He got two wheels out onto the dirt and something broke, didn't it? Toe link, broke. yeah. Toe link uh, or something in the suspension. You just saw uh, the left uh, rear tyre just start pointing the wrong way. I didn't know, see if there was contact before we joined the replay there. Uh, but yes, that is uh, a failure in the left rear of that car. So uh, Teo Overhaus, uh, who had impressed so much in qualifying, and uh, I'll tell you who will be gutted, that will be Julian Hanses, because uh, Julian Hanses has moved up from Porsche Carrera Cup Germany and uh, has taken to uh, ADAC GT4 like a duck to water, has really enjoyed all of the free practice so far. It doesn't look like he is going to get a drive this afternoon. He'll get another go tomorrow. Uh, but Teo Overhaus had really impressed in qualifying. He came out of nowhere. Uh, he stepped into that seat at the very last minute, he wasn't even on our listings coming into uh, this weekend. Uh, he stepped into that seat and really turned a few heads. The CV Performance Group, uh, Mercedes and CV Performance, uh, making their series debut this year uh, from uh, Niederzissen. And uh, the team who have been involved in karting for over 10 years, uh, running that car. And uh, it looked like a real fairy tale start, but uh, it's certainly not carried on in that direction. There is another. CV Performance Group Mercedes uh, in the race, uh, the 84 car in the hands of Ferdinand Winter. But uh, we see Teo uh, just climbing and uh, you just see from his body language, uh, he is uh, just pretty fed up with the whole situation, I would say, wouldn't you? I would. We'll be lucky if he doesn't throw his helmet into the lake just behind the <laughs> arm code, to be honest with you. That is very disappointing for him. Oh, yes. And you can see that to me looks... Yes. Well, it, it's almost it's almost like resting back where it should be now however you could see on the replay that it just started to snap in different directions unfortunately while still on the axle uh, so yeah very much a, a suspension related issue on that car and uh, 
probably wise not to try and move it. Uh, potentially couldn't. Who knows? So the uh, clock is still running. Uh, the safety car is out. So while we have a moment to breathe, uh, uh, just to alert you to a few things, uh, we have a new tyre, new Pirelli tyre uh, for the uh, GT4 this weekend, which is uh, proving uh, to be uh, a new learning experience for a lot of the drivers. We look again at uh, the restart. You can see how did all of those cars get round the hotel turn? Uh, you can see the Dur brothers uh, going side by side before it was Phil Dur who uh, inched ahead. And uh, Marcel Lanez says, I'll have some of that. Let's uh, get in between these two brothers. And they did that. And you could see uh, Theo Overhouse on the outside there, a real fighter, uh, a driver who is going to be one to watch this year. And along with Julian Hanses, a real potent combination. Good to see the uh, Toyota Supra back in GT4. It uh, made a guest appearance at Hockenheim last year and was very, very strong indeed. And uh, this is the view on board with uh, Nikolai Moller Madsen, uh, the number 31 Porsche 718 Cayman for Avia WNS Motorsport. And of course, uh, Nikolai Moller Madsen, the 2020 GT4 champion in the ADAC and uh, staring at the back of a pro sport Aston Martin. Uh, just while we're looking at the replays, just to tell you another new uh, introduction for this year is a new innovative fuel. Um, the Shell Blue Gasoline 98 GC Masters, to give it its title, uh, consists of approximately 50% renewable components developed by Shell exclusively for the ADAC. Really good. The ADAC leading the way uh, with renewable fuels. Look at the amount of jostling at the back of the back. Um, there was uh, one car that looked like it was uh, doing a bit of drift uh, but they've all made it around. Uh, the clock still ticks as we run behind the safety car to remind you that uh, there will be a window that will open in this race, 25 minutes into the race, a pit window. And uh, during that period, a 10 minute period from 25 minutes into the race onwards, uh, each car will be required to visit the pit lane for a mandatory stop and a driver change. So the 10 minute window will be from 25 to 35 on the clock as we look again for Gabriel Piana. Look at this super around the outside. That's a proper ballsy drive. Uh, in the Supra from uh, Marcel Lanez and uh, he has really qualified well in that car. Uh, 24 years old, he uh, came out of Formula 4, ADAC Formula 4 in 2015 and uh, has been in uh, the uh, GT4 category and uh, has really shown well. And uh, the defending champion, I have to remind you, Gabriel Piana and Mikhail Schrey in the Hofer Racing by Bonk Motorsport BMW. They uh, won both races here last year, this event last year, and uh, looking to do the same. So the 85 car being lowered on to the low loader. The uh, staff doing a great job here this weekend, the track marshals. And uh, that is the, is that the other of the uh, Drago race, oh, it's a Drago racing team ZVO, so Jan Philipp Springer, I beg your pardon, the number eight car. Uh, so uh, there's a problem there, and uh, that's been pushed to safety. So uh, that's uh, a real shame. Jan Philipp Springer, of course, who was running in the uh, Audi last year, has uh, changed team and uh, with Drago racing team ZVO, uh, a team that uh, have. Uh, Philip Zakowski of Zach Speed Racing and Jorg van Ummen uh, at the uh, uh, heading up that team, a brand new team, and uh, that's a car that doesn't look to be going any further. Nico Gruber uh, was sharing duties with Jan Philip Springob and uh, Gruber, who won the junior championship in the ADAC TCR championship last year, moving across to GT4, and it looked like he's going to get a race this afternoon. I can see my colleague alongside me clutching the rule book and is about to uh, make an announcement, I do believe. So car 18 uh, under investigation, uh, that is... Miklas Born. Yes, Miklas Born, uh, Mercedes-AMG GT4 from Schnitzelalm Racing.
something. That's three AMGs in some form of trouble from three different teams. That's interesting. Uh, this uh, rule that's been infringed and therefore they are under investigation. It's Article 38.2 uh, C of the uh, of the rule book, which is the three minute sign. Um, cars must not be ja uh, all cars must have their wheels fitted. Cars must not be jacked up again. Any infringement shall result in a penalty according to Article 16. Uh, so, in other words, they must have jacked the car up. Or at least you'd imagine they have. It wouldn't be a very long investigation. They either did or didn't. No, absolutely. You'd think it would be a, a black and white, wouldn't you? Uh, that's a real shame because uh, Bourne, uh, on his debut... Uh in a P8, a really good showing for the number 18 car. Miklas born in the junior category and uh, P8, uh, no mean feat as we look at the 85 car. Uh, Taylor Overhouse uh, being removed from the circuit. Uh, we're looking again uh, down, should I say? Um, and uh, that's a replay of that, yes. So uh, that uh, is the reason we have the safety car. That was a pretty scary moment for uh, Teo Overhouse. I think that time I just clocked the moment it happened. There was a little side-on-side -side uh, collision. With the BMW. With the BMW. Yeah. And actually, the BMW, as it drove away there, started smoking on the right uh, rear. Interesting. Is the bit that would have made contact. We're back to green flag action, though. Phil Dirt leads them off. So we didn't get much warning of that, did we? So safety car is in. Uh, we are back racing again. Phil Durr from Marcel Lanez, Ben Durr. It's a Durr sandwich uh, with uh, Lanez filling all the way. And uh, into turn one we come. A uh, corner that they take pretty flat out going across the curves. And then it's the sharp turn around the hotel turn. Uh, we are 48 minutes and 12 seconds remaining of this race. So that means that we are about 13 minutes away uh, from the pit window opening, according to my <laughs> dodgy calculations. Uh, here we go then, out towards Hasaroda, and uh, out of Hasaroda, and uh, out towards turn four and five. Uh, it's called a corner, it's more of a kink really, and it's very narrow, this circuit. Uh, 11 to 13 meters wide, so not a great deal of room for overtaking. Uh, we now ride on board uh, out towards turn eight, a uh, little chicane. Uh, turns eight and nine together, and then into McDonald's at turn 10. That's a drive through, that one is. And uh, back down towards the shell curve. And that uh, looked like the uh, one of the, was that the Allied Racing Porsche getting a little bit wide and picking up a bit of dirt? And uh, uh, there was a bit of contact going on. We are changing indeed, and uh, I am still getting used to a lot of the liveries of these cars in this new season, uh, but a bit of contact as they ran side by side, bounced off each other, and it looks like they're all still pointing in the right direction and continue on their way. Phil Durr once again across the line to lead the way from Marcel Lanez and Ben Durr, 007 in the Aston Martin, and uh, great to see them uh, really uh, embracing the uh, 007 theme with that car. Our cameraman got a new drone for Christmas and he's using it to great effect as he chases the cars down towards Hasaroda. There is the one, two, three. Some great shots here from the Oschersleben Motorsport Arena. Uh, just to point out the two cars relevant to that incident were uh, Marcel Marshevitz and Vincent Andronarko, uh, the Schnitzelaum Mercedes uh, and Nicolas Born uh, in the Porsche. Uh, sorry, Nicolas Born in the Mercedes and Andronarko in the Porsche. Yeah, something like that. And uh, it was those two that had the collision there and awesome uh, piece of tar uh, carbon fibre down and then immediately scoot back up. Yeah, uh, I didn't see what that fell off. Uh, I was looking away at the time and uh, I wonder... Uh, well, it would be lucky if whoever ran over it doesn't get a puncture. Mm, yes, it's uh, it's often a fine line. We've, we have seen some carbon fibre bounce off a sidewall a couple of times today and miraculously not cause any delamination, but uh, always a bit worried after you see that. So Bendor continues to lead the way, a driver who has a beat, not Bendor, that's the other one, Phil Dor. it was always going to happen, wasn't it? He was third in the 2021 Championship, sixth in 2020, uh, son of the team boss, Reina Dor, and uh, one of three drivers who have competed in every ADAC GT4 race ever. Uh, so uh, that is uh, quite uh, a title to have, and uh, he is therefore very experienced, and therefore in a 
great position, leading this race, uh, without a doubt, a challenger for the championship this year. Marcel Linares in that uh, Toyota Supra in second, and then Bendor. Uh, the Aston Martins, one, three, five. Expected to see one in sevens, but actually tenth is the next one. Uh, Toyota in second, uh, the BMW of Gabriel Piana, uh, Owen Ortman, uh, obviously in P5 as well. Nikolai Moller Madsen and Vincent Andronaco uh, running together in uh, sixth and seventh. So a real variety of manufacturers and the uh, balance of performance working to good effect. You have cars uh, that are uh, yeah, front engined and mid engined. Uh, and uh, all sorts of capacities and different variations are running this close together. The balance of performance really doing its stuff. And that's a great camera shot as the cars bump over the curbs. Variety of different uh, power plants. So you've got five cylinders out there. You've got some sixes, got some eights. Uh, lots going on out there on the circuit. As you say, all very finely balanced as well. And uh, the cars have to be finely balanced from a setup perspective because of just how much curb these drivers decide to take. Uh, a lot of them really do abuse the shots, they really don't they? Do. It's, uh, it's quite something to witness. A bad run out of the corner there from Andronaco, and that could leave him uh, under pressure from both of the Schnitzel Al Mercedes, which are running uh, in, oh, sorry, seven and eight. Is that both Schnitzel Al Mercedes? Mercedes is, 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 no, it's not. <laughs> uh, but uh, the Mercedes, oh, and there's oh. a moment for the 32 car. Does it hit the barriers? Oh, oh. it does. Quite a Leo lovely hit, Pichler. Oh, dear. That was uh, just a bit too much, Kerb. And uh, then a bit of a lean oh. on from one of the Astons. That's uh, less than helpful. So the elbow's out from the Aston, but uh, Leo Pichler, who uh, was uh, in the uh, KTM Crossbow last year, along with Leon Vassiter, uh, a very different kettle of fish indeed. Of course, they won at uh, Hockenheim and uh, did a great job there. Uh, but uh, changing uh, to a Porsche this year, a very different car to drive. And uh, looks as though he's kept it uh, going and got it back to the pit. So we won't need a safety car, but uh, that car is uh, almost certainly incurred some pretty heavy damage and uh, Leon Vassiter uh, uh, may not get a drive this afternoon. He might not. Uh, in this episode of Adam Second Guessing Himself Theatre, it was indeed the two uh, Schnitzelbaum uh, Mercedes chasing down and bearing down an Andronaco there. You see them, the similar uh, gr lime green that they uh, uh, that they both sport, and they're named after Schnitzel, and yet they're in lime colours. Well, it was an interesting one, but uh, Schnitzel now riding high off of uh, some success uh, in the uh, GT Winter Series out in uh, Barcelona. Actually, title success with one of their BMW M2s, and they'll be looking to try and make a similar mark on their uh, bow in the uh, ADAC GT4. You saw Leo Pischler just joining there, uh, coming out of the pit lane and rejoining on the back of the pack. So uh, uh, the car's being inspected. Hopefully it's still all good and uh, he can continue on his way. Just going back to Vincent Andronaco. He's just 16 years old. He's uh, come from karting and uh, he's teamed up with Paul Oral Koenig. Uh, that is quite a potent combination uh, for Team Allied Racing, a team that have been very successful in GT racing, have moved up to uh, GT Masters this year as as well and I would expect to see that number 22 car featuring in the results all season long and uh, Vincent and uh, Dranarco has uh, uh, impressed no end of course he and his teammate both in the fight for the junior championship our leading junior driver at the moment is Ben Dur in third place with Mike David Altman in fifth place he's second in category for the juniors our leading trophy driver is Tom Kiefer, who currently is 12th uh, on the track. So, a lively first uh, few minutes of this race. Uh, first few minutes, first 20 minutes. Uh, it is still Phil Dur who leads from Marcel Lanez and Ben Dur. Uh, the cars across the line once again. It's a seven tenths lead uh, for Phil Dur, so he's not exactly uh, running away with it. Not by any stretch of the imagination. It's uh, uh, very much a matter of uh, anything you can do, I can do better on the timing screens, really. A couple of times we've seen a bit more pace out of, uh, 
out of the 69 car Phil Durr and then immediately it seems everyone behind finds similar pace. They're just running off track almost there for a second uh, was the car that I believe is uh, now a lap down, uh, Pichler, yes indeed. And so they checked that car over, sent it back out onto the circuit, but they did so in the middle of the pack and that's always a bit hair raising. Car 20 was shown the uh, black and white flag. That was Lucas Meyer for uh, Eastside Motorsport in the Mercedes. Uh, black and white flag for causing a collision. Of course, the black and white flag isn't a penalty as such. It means you are being watched. And this is a replay of uh, Pischler yeah, so. uh, doing a bit of rally cross uh, on the outside of the corner. And uh, is, this, is this a replay? No, this is, yeah, it's a replay, but of a different incident. So uh, clearly Pischler is not taking to uh, the Porsche in the way that he had hoped. I wonder if there is an inherent problem with that car that's causing him to go off track. Possibly so, he just asked too much of the car. Uh, as you see a shot of the drone there, there is the Christmas present action. Uh, yeah, it's it, it, it just, you ask too much of the car through turn two, very quickly end up spearing off. And actually, uh, in the process of doing that on that occasion, Pischler ended up almost taking someone else with him. Well, it's interesting to see on our timing screens that both uh, Leo Pischler and uh, car six, that's Ewan McKay, um, have been referred to the steward uh, because of an incident. Uh, so I wonder if uh, there was a collision that uh, has caused an issue with that car. Well, was, that was you and Mackay was oh, the that driver. Oh, that was the way he backed yes, off, wasn't it? Of course toss. it was. Yes, yes it was. indeed. So that has been referred to the stewards. So, uh, Unsurprising. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the stewards are uh, plenty to be uh, occupying themselves with. Uh, well, that'll be the number 20 car then. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, that's very that's, kind, uh, isn't it? That's very kind to us. Of course, it's all new liveries and driver pairs this year. Um, it doesn't take much to confuse us at the best of times. So uh, first race of the season is always going to be a bit interesting, isn't it? And there is the number 20 car. Uh, big enough numbers on the side as well. Lucas Meyer. And uh, Meyer is uh, currently under pressure. And that is, uh, is that Yevgen Solokovsky? Yevgen uh, Sokolovsky, uh, who is challenging him in the Aston Martin. Uh, uh, Sokolovsky, who is sharing with Christopher Roerner for Pro Sport Racing, that Aston Martin is very rapid indeed. And uh, the Ukrainian driver is putting it to good use, chasing uh, Lucas Meyer and uh, shadowing his every move. Lucas Meyer in his second season here in the ADAC GT4 Germany. Top four, still very, very close together. Or well, top six, really. I don't want to give them a discredit. And uh, Piana, I think a lot of the time last year, uh, towards the end of the race, you started to see that BMW get very squirrely indeed. And I'm just interested to see how the tyres uh, last uh, now that we have got the new rubber, the kind of newly developed for 2022 Pirelli rubber. They haven't uh, really done much for the GT racing compound in a while. They admitted that themselves in some of the press releases. And so it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, this quite major step that they've taken for 2022 and how that affects each individual car, because it will affect every car differently. So lots of factors, lots of learning here under the bright sunshine here at the Oschersleben Motorsport Arena for the ADAC GT4 race one of 12 this season. Uh, we are but a minute and a half away from the pit window opening. Now, the, uh, this is where the teamwork really is going to come into play. Uh, whether the team wants to bring the uh, driver in early on in the pit window or late on. Uh, bring him in early, maybe get the chance of the undercut if they're running in traffic. Uh, so I would suggest if they're running an open road, they might want to stay out longer into the window. Uh, but every car within that 10 minute window will need to come and visit the pit lane. I was just looking at the progress of uh, Patrick Steinmetz, uh, who runs in 18th place. Of course, uh, he is uh, running uh, for Schubert Motorsport and uh, they are the team that are based just down the road from here uh, running in the BMW M4 GT4 and Patrick Steinmetz uh, who is uh, making uh, his debut in GT4. Uh, lots of experience in the NLS uh, but uh, not so much uh, here in GT4 and uh, yeah, doing well in the BMW. 
So, we take a deep breath because we are 30 seconds away from the pit window opening. That car there continues to lead the way. It's Phil Durr from Marcel Inez, Ben Durr, and uh, Gabriel Piana staying very much uh, in touch. Uh, there is the third place 007 Ben Durr car. There you go. The, it says pit window is open. A little bit premature there. The light is flashing. Uh, the cars will have a minimum pit stop time of 95 seconds. So from pit entry to pit exit, they must not go below 95 seconds. If they do, as we see Gabriel Piana just picking up a bit of dirt and throwing a bit of smoke up, if they do go below that 95 seconds, uh, they will pick up a penalty. Uh, each car will need to visit the pits. And uh, there is the first one to blink. It's one of the Mercedes that we saw ducking in. That's that was the... Class born in. Yes, so the 18 and the 95. Simon Connor Prim in the other, another of the Dua Motorsport Aston Martins. They're everywhere, those things are. Uh, so they're into the pit lane. We've got quite a few cars just peeling in at the moment. And... Uh, Across the uh, line they go, so the clock will start uh, now and uh, they will be uh, on the watchful eye of the race steward. So the uh, pit lane speed limit has been reduced this year from 60 uh, kilometers an hour to 50. So that will feel painfully slow as they head into the pits. Uh, the team waving the lollipop to say, here we are. And uh, the first of the... Uh, Dua Motorsport cars into the pit. Simon Connor Prim, who will be handing over to Nico Hanska. And uh, Hanska helps Prim out of the car. Uh, heavily restricted. Uh, only two mechanics are allowed to work on the car. The driver helps one out and uh, then gets in himself. And then the outgoing driver helps. Uh, there we can see. Uh, one of the Porsches into the pit, so that That's is Piana. Piana. So, Gabriel Piana with a problem. The defending champion, Gabriel Piana, parks the hoe for racing by Bonk Motorsport BMW at the side of the track. Uh, this is very big indeed, the first race of the championship, and the defending champion is parked up at the side of the track, and it looks like he's out of harm's way, so we won't need a safety car or a full course yellow, but this is very significant. These uh, is the driver pairing who won both races here at Osterslebben this time last year and uh, parked up at the side of the track and his afternoon is over. Mikael Schrey is not going to get a drive this afternoon. So that is uh, big news indeed. And uh, he uh, parked well out of the way up out uh, between you know, it's outside uh, near turn four I think let's have a look and I wonder what happened you saw we saw that puff of blue smoke earlier when he came out of the corner didn't we and I said he'd run wide uh, but it looks as though something has broken on that BMW and uh, I can't remember the last time I saw a uh, hope for racing by Bond BMW not finishing a race it's a big shame, isn't it? Uh, as you say, the champions, uh, the number one car, it's a really significant development as uh, pit stops ongoing. Uh, that's one of the various De, uh, Aston Martins, the 97 car now being taken over by Holzer. Yes, that's uh, Juliana Holzen giving way to Sandra Holzen, uh, the twins. So, like, the cars look the same, but so do the drivers nowadays <laughs> as well. So, uh, yeah, just uh, we're forewarning you there will be confusion. Uh, but uh, great to have the Holzems here uh, running for Dua Motorsport. We were out uh, walking the track yesterday, and they were out running around the circuit in training. Uh, so they're taking this very, very seriously, uh, all the Dua crew are. And uh, none more so than Phil Dua, who continues to lead the way in the number 69 car now when he comes into the pits he is going to be handing over to Indy Doncha now there's a name for anyone who follows GT3 and GT4 racing a bit of a legend in his own lunchtime and he is going to be taking over from Phil Doerr uh, so that is such a strong partnership this year and uh, they clearly are going to be championship favourites mainly uh, because they're leading the race at the moment already uh, there is the second place of Marcel Lanez uh, coming under incredible 
increasing pressure from Ben Dur. I wonder whether uh, the Dur Motorsport crew might pull Ben in early and try and get the undercut on that Toyota. The Caymans always find each other, don't they? And here we are, three of them uh, <laughs> trying to find a way through turn one and two and getting up on the kerb there for good measure just in front of uh, the 97 car. So uh, Juliana Holtzum is, oh, I could get involved with that battle, but I imagine these cars themselves, in fact, no, these ones have already pitted, so I'll eat my words there. But <laughs> it's uh, Schwerfeld that's uh, leading this pack in the 33 uh, car. Uh, Daniel Schwerfeld, of course, one of the trophy runners as well. Uh, so they'll be having a race within a race as well as forming their own Porsche Cup. Leaders in, Phil Doerr into the pits. Uh, so, uh, it is Mike David Ortman who takes up the running at the front. Lenez also shadowing the leader in. So uh, Marcel Lenez is going to be handing over to Cedric Pirro, uh, who will be taking the wheel of the Toyota Supra. Uh, but here comes the driver that was the race leader, Phil Durr. There's Indy Doncha on standby, uh, ready to tear him out, drag him out of the car. And uh, uh, Doncha will jump in a very experienced... Is that Lucky Dice hanging up on the corner? No, it's not. <laughs> Dodger, well, he's a mistake. That's my car. Dodger into the uh, driver's seat, and uh, he is such an experienced pilot. Uh, I maybe I've bigged him up a little bit too much there. Uh, there is the Hofer Racing by Bonk Motorsport BMW. Uh, of course, there are two of them uh, in this race. The other being driven by Max Rosam and Tim Reiter. Ah, I think he ran out of gears there, Piana. Yes. That was the blue smoke, was the uh, gearbox potentially expiring. Oh, and that's uh, bits of it yeah. dragging along the track by the sound of things. Uh, so, yes, uh, that is the end of that. And uh, most certainly the end of the afternoon for Piano, which is uh, a real shame for him. Uh, but he will come back. Uh, right, is this Doncha? I think it is. The engine's running. Uh, be careful that you don't go underneath the uh, time, the allotted 95 seconds. This is time to perfection, so, <coughs> excuse me, the team give him the all clear to pull away, and uh, out he comes. Oh, I thought, yes, we have had a change of position in the pit lane. Uh, the other De Aston has come out ahead of the Supra, so that has changed uh, in the pit lane, which is uh, not something that happens often with those very precisely timed yeah. uh, pit stops. I was looking because if the uh, little green P that you see inside the driver's name were to turn red, it would mean that they had gone below the 95 bit second, 95 min, 95 minute, 95 <laughs> Second pit stop time, 95 minutes would be what I'd do. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it was just uh, done in the changeover. And uh, is this Mike David Altman in? It is handing over to Hugo Sasser uh, in the uh, 24 Pro Sport Racing Aston Martin. Uh, this is a potent duo, real championship favourite. Uh, Hugo Sasser, who's also and Mike David Altman, have both appeared in ADAC GT Masters. Uh, Sasser constantly concentrating very much on A-levels this year, uh, so has uh, reduced his racing commitments, is also doing GT4 Europe, and uh, he now takes the wheel of that Aston Martin Vantage, having taken over Mike David Altman. We will see where he will rejoin once the pit stop is completed. He's reducing his racing commitments to focus on his a Oh, he's also doing a whole other championship. That's a very racing driver approach to reducing your weekends, isn't it? <laughs> was, uh, they were struggling with brake issues on Friday and they uh, uh, certainly uh, Hugo was saying they don't feel like they're on top of the game yet uh, they're pretty potent and when they are on the top of the game uh, it will be a brave man who bets against them here comes Sasa out of the pit lane to rejoin now where will he join he's going to be a little further back than he would like but it's still in the points looks like it's going to be just behind no, ahead of Falcon back and Bachmann so Cedric Pirro has already lost the position to uh, Dur uh, to the 007 again. Right. Yes. So absolutely. So uh, Indy Doncha uh, effectively leading the way because the uh, positions two to four are now into the pits. I told you we'd get confused easily, didn't I? And. Um, Vincent Andronaco uh, leading at the front in the Allied Racing Porsche 718 Cayman. 
Uh, so uh, he has yet to pit and he needs to get in pretty quickly uh, because the pit window is opening, in, uh, closing in about 40 seconds time. Now, where is the 22 car? Uh, do you know what? He's leaving it pretty tight. He is going to make it into the pits because he's just around turn 12 at the moment. But there's nothing like leaving it until the window is about to close. I think he has to get across the uh, line to trigger the beam and he pulls into the pit lane now. So Andronarco just uh, dropping into the pit lane and uh, he makes it before the window closes. Uh, so now every driver is either in or has visited the pits. Um, it looks like it'll be Doncha who uh, leads the way once uh, the pit stops are done. Now taking over the 007 car is Roman LaRue for Dur Motorsport. Now Roman LaRue, who is uh, most certainly new in the ADAC uh, GT4 this year, the 2021 French GT4 champion, uh, now in that driving seat. And it'll be interesting to see whether he's got anything that he can do to challenge his teammate in the Doncha. Okay, interesting stuff. I love the inter Schnitzelown wars that we've got uh, going on on track at the moment. This is uh, Falkenbach versus Bookman uh, in the 18 and 15 cars respectively. So Robin Falkenbach uh, leading this fight at the moment for what is seventh position. And looking at it, it is very much a fight, isn't it? There go the headlights as well. Uh, so Marek Bookman has absolutely no intention of biding his time. Let's see if he can try and find a way by. Great stuff up and down the grid here, isn't it? So uh, Robin Falkenbach uh, uh, and uh, Bachmann uh, need to be very careful because uh, they must not take each other out. I mean, they must not anyway, but especially when you're running for the same team. Uh, Andronarco still showing as in the pits at the moment and uh, looking to see where Indy Doncha is on our driver tracker just around turn 12. So uh, Indy Doncha uh, will be comfortably in the lead once uh, the Andronarco car comes out of the pits of course it won't have Andronarco at the wheel anymore it will be Paul Oral Koenig and uh, we look forward to seeing him in the race in just a few moments uh, we continue to focus on the Falkenbach Bachmann uh, battle for seventh place uh, now uh, Dolce crosses the line in the lead Roman LaRue in second Cedric Pirro in third place and then Hugo Sasser, so he's done well out of the pit stops. It's an Aston Martin, one, two, and four. Very impressive indeed, with just a Toyota spoiling the Aston Martin party. The uh, inter-team battle continues on between uh, the two Schnitzel Arm racing Mercedes AMGs. Two Schnitzel Arm cars bearing Schnitzel Arms in this battle. <laughs> Had to do it, it got hey. into my head, I couldn't help it. <laughs> uh, just rejoining ahead of them is the Koenig car uh, that's now uh, well, it's now in, in the hands of Koenig, having previously uh, been uh, driven by uh, Andronarco, Vincent Andronarco. Those, of course, both junior drivers. We do have the junior and trophy elements uh, in this race for good measure, of which there's quite a few trophy drivers because the GT4 Championship is so popular with young upcoming GT stars. And that's really good to see. You do have these experienced veterans of GT racing, people who've done years upon years at the North Life, but you've also got the young Young ones, and goodness me, is this getting exciting? Oh, Good defense. Oh, on the Koenig. inside, I thought that was going to be a bit too close. Falcon back, determined to get through, but he might have to give it up to Berkman now. Berkman tried to go around the outside. He's got good momentum through the second last corner. Last turn's not usually an overtaking the opportunity, but he gave it a good, good go. Koenig, though, defending well, holds on to sick for the time being. Poor Oral Koenig, he really has got his mirror full of Mercedes AMGs, hasn't he? And I thought it was all going to end in tears there. And uh, now he just stretches his legs a little bit as they're heading towards hotel. And look at them bumping across the curb. They build them strong on Mercedes, don't they? Uh, Robin Falkenbach, uh, who uh, fared so well in last year's championship and uh, was always there oh, or thereabouts. The drone crash. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there we go. We didn't think we were going to witness a plane crash today, but there we go. We clearly have. So uh, the drone is in the lake. Uh, can confirm it is now filming the fishes. Uh, our focus <laughs> continues on this. It is Paul Oral Koenig, Robin Falkenbach, and uh, Marek Bachmann, or Bachmann uh, who is in eighth place. And this is a battle that will rage on. Uh, so high drama indeed here. <laughs> 
Marsh is lemon. Uh, we won't be seeing any more shots from up above, just uh, sorry to announce. Uh, so, bumping across the curves, and uh, there we go. The leader's just gone through our picture. You uh, mentioned earlier about uh, how this is a great training ground for many young drivers, and it's been really good to see in the GT Masters this weekend a number of drivers who were in GT4 last year and the year before. I think about Yusuf Oega, Salmon Oega, uh, Jan Marshalkovsky, um, and so many other drivers uh, that then move up into the uh, senior category. And of course, Joel Sturm, who really shone uh, today in the GT Masters race. And uh, they were all running in GT4 last year. And uh, here they are now leading the way in the senior category. And uh, what is that hanging off the front of the 32 car? That's just the tow hook, but it's come, <laughs> it's come loose. As if their race hasn't been hard enough, the tow hook has actually now kind of started to disintegrate, which is... Is that class as a movable aerodynamic advantage? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> they are looking at go. And uh, that's uh, Vassatura in the uh, number 34 WNS Motorsport Porsche 718 Cayman and uh, doing a little bit of uh, gravel racing there. And uh, uh, yes, <laughs> it's uh, uh, drama wherever you look. That's Indy Doncha uh, in the lead of this race. And uh, he uh, has uh, a fair lead of nearly four seconds over uh, Bendor in, uh, not Bendor, in uh, second place. So I'm looking at our timing screens, haven't updated the driver's name. So uh, Roman LaRue. Uh, so uh, uh, excuse me if I say duh, it is actually any Doncha ahead of Roman LaRue uh, by some 3.7 seconds. So uh, uh, that is a duh motorsport, one, two, got that bit right. And uh, Cedric Pirro in third place. But look at this battle that rages on and still Paul Oral Koenig is under pressure. Gabriele Ilkova wants a piece of this as well in the uh, Drago Racing Team ZVO Mercedes. Uh, just closing in and closing in back there in ninth place. Let's take a look at the relative pace. 133s, mid 33s from these three cars. Then what's Ilkova doing? 32.9. So uh, making up a few tenths every lap and now very much a part of this battle. Uh, Mercedes everywhere in the mirrors of Koenig. I've uh, been looking forward to this uh, all through the winter because last season the combination of Gabriella Jokova and Robert Haub were entertainers through and through, particularly in Zanvor. And Jokova uh, really knows how to drive that car and uh, she was uh, featuring in the results. Uh, throughout last season and uh, clearly a contender for the championship this year and uh, she never gives up, always fighting. There's a car we haven't seen much of so far, it's a KTM Crossbow, isn't it? Yes, the only one on the grid in the 2022 season as of now. More are welcome, hint, hint, hint. Uh, 22nd place at the moment uh, for the 89 car being driven by Matej Pavlcek. Yes, we do actually have another KTM that was booked in for this weekend, but uh, hasn't actually, uh, for whatever reason, uh, been able to uh, take part. So uh, Pavlicek uh, under pressure from Bulatov uh, in the number 20 Eastside Motorsport Mercedes. Dennis Bulatov, uh, great to welcome him into the ADAC GT4 uh, this weekend and uh, pressuring the KTM crossbow. Our leader continues to be Indy Doncha with uh, 17 minutes plus one lap of this race remaining. Now a stop and go time penalty has been awarded uh, to car number 22 for a pit stop outside of the pit stop window. Uh, so Paul Oral Koenig having fought so hard currently in P6 is gonna have to visit the pit lane, a pit stop time penalty of 11 seconds. Also, car 18, a penalty lap uh, for a tyre change after three minute signal. So we uh, saw that flashed up earlier, uh, Mick Glassborn and Marek Buchmann, and uh, the car was clearly uh, having a tyre change after the three minute signal. Now the penalty lap, if you're new to ADAC GT4 racing, uh, there is a box that is painted on the track off the racing line on the exit of turn three. 
and uh, every uh, any driver who's awarded a penalty lap will need to pass through that box uh, for one lap uh, at a maximum of 60 kilometers an hour. The box is about 200 meters. There it is there, you can see it. Uh, and it's on the right-hand side of your screen, the driver will need to pass through that box at no more than 60 kilometers an hour. And uh, it's kind of like a lesser punishment than a drive-through penalty, which would put a driver potentially almost to the back of the pack. Absolutely, it allows for some fairer ruling in certain instances uh, up there in race control. One thing I do want to say, that the, the uh, Pavlicek KTM, I've been looking at that all day long thinking, doesn't look right, something wrong. It doesn't have the rear wing. Now that there is, is a rear wing on the Crossbow GT4. I've just looked at pictures of the car uh, online to just be sure about it. But yes, it doesn't have a rear wing on it, which they haven't released a 2022 Evo uh, like streamline spec. I've looked into it. And uh, yes, yeah, so very strange. I'm going to have to go and investigate that one for my own interest. If they run out of rear wings, what's going on there? Well, I've just been investigating my notes for the same. Maybe they're going for the low downfall setup here at uh, the Oster. Oh, yes, the tight, one of the arena. tightest circuits on the stock. Indeed, calendar. well, why? Not uh, Checks it's, uh, out. <laughs> absolutely. There is the uh, BMW that we talked about earlier. The number ten, Patrick Steinmetz, is now handed over to Michael von Zbienski, and there is Paul Oral Koenig serving that stop and go. Now that um, is uh, quite a severe penalty. That will put him a long way back and uh, probably well out of the points. So I'm uh, just looking at the timing screens. Uh, Paul Oral Koenig exiting the pits, and here is a battle for position: the 89 and the 20. Car. That is uh, Denis Bulatov and Matej Pavlicek uh, going at it hammer and tongs. And uh, Bulatov was in front briefly, uh, but not for long. KTM versus Mercedes. They're running close together. And uh, you can see Bulatov. That car's number 20, don't you know? And uh, there he is bumping over the curbs. Uh, we're now looking at the leader, Indy Doncha. Uh, and he's just passed our screen. Roman LaRue and Cedric Pirro. Hugo Sassa is closing in on Cedric Pirro. So let's have a look at the gap. So Hugo Sassa, nine tenths of a second behind Cedric Pirro. So can Hugo Sassa, a man on a mission, can he uh, do something about that and uh, get on the podium? He said he was taking it easy to uh, look at his A-levels. Doesn't look like he's taking it easy to me. No, uh, so that's uh, the 23 car being lapped, I believe that is. The Overdrive Racing uh, Cayman, if I'm not mistaken. Stefan Bastachev, that would be, who uh, took over from Pavel left to right. Ah, no, I'll, I'll correct myself. That's him going past Berkman. Sorry, so Berkman being put down a position by Bastachev there, actually. So it's allow Mercedes falling through the order. Bast uh, Bastachev getting himself up to eighth. So, gosh, uh, 30 minutes remaining. I'm going to just stop and just take breath. It's kind of happening all over the place. Let's have a look at the lead gap. Indy Doncha is uh, leading the way. Uh, where is he out on track? He's just coming around turn 13 at the moment and out of the final corner onto the pit straight once again. It was a 5.456 second lead. Uh, let's see what that is when he breaks the timing beam this time around. And uh, it is 5.5, uh, so he's opened it up by about a tenth. Uh, there is uh, Roman LaRue who's gone through, then Cedric Pirro, Hugo Sassa, and Finn Zulauf in the number 31 of Avia WS Motorsport Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 RSCS. There's a mouthful, Finn Zulaf, who took over from Nikolai Mollemansen, and they have dug the drone out of the lake and uh, put it back up in the air, and the drone is flying. Either that or they got two for Christmas, but uh, great shots here around the uh, motorsport arena in Oshersleben. I do want to say, actually, I think if anyone is the car to watch in that battle for third, it is actually the uh, Zulav car. Yellow flag in turn oh. two. That's for the 23, but Standardjev with a spin. No sooner did he get himself up into eighth than he's had a moment. I'll we'll have to see whether he fell or whether he was pushed, but nonetheless, he'll fall through the order with that one. Oh, dear, it's very close. Oh, oh. he was pushed. Oh. Oh dear, that was uh, Berkman ending up uh, 
with a bit of a moment. Now, Bertman, interestingly, was eighth across the line again. So I wonder if Bastandajev managed to get back through at turn one and then got a nice uh, punty by on the uh, turn two. <laughs> punty by indeed. Yeah. It did look like Bastandajev did leave the door open on the inside and yeah. then tried to close it afterwards. So uh, the stewards will no doubt look at that. But it looked to me uh, from my very uh, uh, unprofessional eye that uh, it was a bit of a self-inflicted wound. He's now ragging it, as they say in the trade, <laughs> and uh, giving it all that he's got to try and get back. Uh, there's the other of the Hofu Racing by Bok Motorsport BMWs. Uh, that's quite a long way back. Uh, that'll be Reiter in uh, 16th place, so Tim Reiter. And uh, that's a long way back compared to uh, where the teammate was running before the breakdown. Uh, Andy Dodger, the uh, letters flashing DRP, and uh, I'm not entirely sure how they get that from uh, Indy Doncha, but uh, uh, the initials, so many of the drivers uh, flash up in the screen. He is leading the way, uh, 6.138 seconds over teammate, uh, and that is uh, Romain Larue. Cedric Pirro is uh, some five seconds behind of that. And then we see the battle with Hugo Sasa, Finn Zulauf, and Robin Falkenbach. Uh, the rejuvenated drone uh, continues to uh, thrill us with these shots, uh, chasing the cars up uh, towards uh, Hasseroda and uh, looking down on the penalty box. That's a great view. Well, it would be if we could see beyond the graphics. There we go. There's the penalty box. You can see it there. And uh, out in towards a turn four. It's interesting this because Pavlicek and Bulatov, who were scrapping for the low 20th positions, have now managed to work together to get themselves up into this little battle for 19th that we're witnessing. It's Neumann here in the 19th, pla 19th place car, uh, leading this pack of four, or make it five, with the KTM of Pavlicek joining in. Uh, so, yeah, battles all throughout the order. Pretty standard fare, really, when it comes to uh, ADAC GT4. There's always something going on for somebody. Keep an eye on Gabriela Jukova in uh, seventh place. She is just four tenths of a second behind Robin Falkenbach. Uh, and she is on a mission. I would not be surprised if she uh, makes a bid for P6 before this race is out. Uh, and uh, Falkenbach, currently the least leading Mercedes. It's an Aston Martin 1 2 at the moment, Toyota 3, uh, Aston Martin 4th, a lone Porsche in fifth place in the hands of Finn Zulaf, and then three Mercedes AMGs uh, rounding out the top eight. Uh, but uh, the Aston Martin that uh, is really counting at the moment is that of Indy Doncha uh, leading the way in the number 69 car for Der Motorsport. Uh, there is Finn Zulaf in the uh, Porsche. And uh, is Yukova, as you mentioned, uh, uh, a lap ago, less than a lap ago, that she was on a mission. And uh, there is the uh, screenshotable proof as they run down towards turn 11. Uh, Falcon back with a mirror full of very similar car, albeit for the uh, Drago Racing Team ZVO outfit. And uh, oh, running a little bit wide there at uh, T12, but no harm, no foul. Let's see if Yukova can try and set up a move here. So uh, Falkenbach and Djokova both uh, showed well in last year's GT4 Championship. Uh, they both know their way around the Oschersleben Motorsport Arena. They've done it a few times. And uh, Djokova, though, uh, looks very eager. Identical cars, as we already said. Uh, look at them cut uh, across the curbing, bouncing the Mercedes AMG up around the hotel turn and uh, are taking a different line to so Gabriel Jakova just holding a tighter line through the hotel uh, corner up toward Hasseroda under braking and then it's the big 180 back down towards the turn four and uh, still Falkenbach leading the way there's not a great deal of opportunity in this section of the track through the kink that is turns five six uh, not many opportunities to get past there. Uh, probably the next good opportunity for Djokova will probably be out of turn 10 as they head along what would be effectively a back straight. But uh, drive to penalty for car 18 for causing a collision. So uh, that's Burton that's, uh, spinning Marek around Bost Bastandajev. Yeah, so uh, clearly the stewards didn't agree with me. It's just as well I'm not in the steward. <laughs> uh, so they do believe that uh, it was Berkman who should have backed out of 
that and that it wasn't Postanchev who caused that problem. So the drive through penalty will relegate the number 18 car, well, a long way down the order, currently in 17th and uh, soon to be pretty well stone last, I should think. Mm. Yes, going and joining Koenig on the naughty step. In fact, they are 22nd and 23rd respectively now. So oh, right, OK, go. that's updated <laughs> nice and quickly, isn't it? So here we go uh, along the pit straight in towards Turn 1, the final six minutes of this race. And we're focusing on the battle for P6. Robin Falcon back with Gabriela Chilkova marching him into Turn 2 round Hotel Corner. And uh, Falcon back just taking a uh, deeper line into the corner. Chilkova keeping it tight. Have Has she and Robert Howe looked after the tyres better? than uh, Falkenbach and uh, Marcel, pa uh, pa Marcel Parchevitz have uh, in the first part of this race. Uh, you can see that uh, Jill Kova is now closer than she has been at any point so far. And she is a pretty ruthless driver when it comes to getting through the traffic and she continues to close in. Picking through the positions there is uh, von Zabienski in the uh, Schubert BMW up to 18th now as the dueling continues uh, at the tail end of the top 20. And uh, yeah, great to see this battle happening as well. And uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, it'll be, I think Patrick Steinmetz will be happy with that. He's handed the car over to Michael von Zabienski and uh, just watched it go up the order a little bit. That's always a positive. Always a positive. There we go. We continue to focus on that battle, the number 97 car, with uh, Sandro Holzem taking over from Giuliano Holzem. Uh, yet another Dua Motorsport. I was, if I don't know which team the car's from, I say Dua Motorsport because uh, most of the time it's likely to be right. They have an awful lot of cars uh, in this category this year. We're not complaining because they are real entertainers, a uh, really significant part of the ADAC GT4 Germany. And it's one of their cars that leads the way in the hands of Ine Doncha. Uh, the number 69 car, Indy Doncha, who took over from Phil Doerr, who has led this race. Uh, and apart from the pit stops, uh, he and Indy Doncha have utterly dominated proceedings here at Oschersleben. Uh, they get to do it all again tomorrow, uh, but we've got to get to the end of this race first. In uh, second place, Roman LaRue, Cedric Pirro, Hugo Sasser in P4, Finn Zulauf in P5, then the battle that we have been focusing on, the uh, battle of the Mercedes-AMG, uh, Falkenbach and Jill Kova. And the 95 being pursued there, that is another Dermot Sporter uh, entry. That's Nico Hanka, isn't it? Yes, yes. Nico Hanka being pursued by uh, Ricardo Dort uh, at the moment uh, in that battle uh, for eighth position. And uh, then some more moving and shaking going on just outside the top 10. I think that was, yes, it was still getting past Rusbrickson, I think. Yes, I was right. Uh, still uh, up to P12, or P11 then with that, and could knock on the door of a top 10. The next target for him is the number six with Tom Wood at the wheel, having hand, had it handed over from Ewan McKay. And oh no, this battle was always going to cause <laughs> trouble eventually, wasn't it? I wonder if that's that, I believe, uh, missing rear wing. Ah, you can see where the rear wing came flapping, off. Flapping okay. away. I thought I'd seen that in an earlier shot. He almost got it airborne there out the corner as well. And there we go, another aerodynamic advantage, I would say. <laughs> uh, so uh, the uh, uh, KTM crossbow uh, flapping bits of bodywork, but continuing on its way. Yeah, that's part of the wheel arch, actually. That is bodywork, isn't it? Yes, and, uh, somebody has uh, had a big moment with an ADAC sign on the right-hand side there. I was uh, correcting myself, not you, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said the, it was um, part of the wing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a scattered billboard at the side there. Uh, we didn't see who went through that, but uh, the ADAC sign, a little bit shortened. Uh, there is the leader, Indy Dodger, a man of uh, great experience and uh, a real... Uh, a real character, somebody that we welcome into the ADAC GT4 Germany. He raced uh, on and off last year in this category. Uh, a man of uh, uh, many uh, races over the years. Uh, he was third in the, 19, uh, the 2019 GT Master Championship. He was one point off second. And uh, 
uh, has now uh, decided to focus very much on GT4 this year. And of course, Indy last year, he did do some racing. It was under Dur Motorsport, but it was McLaren. Yes, uh, it was. So he's, yes. been, he's been shifted into their signature vehicle now, the Aston Martin, as Hugo Sasser loses uh, his fourth place there to Zulav. So Zulav's got through into P4. Uh, the Danger Man in the Cayman has finally struck, and fourth place now belongs uh, to the number 31 Avia WNS Motorsport car. So Hugo Sasser and Mike David Norman, who uh, debuted midway through the season, or towards the latter part of the season last year, at Saxon Ring and won first time out. Not finding it quite so easy today, uh, but uh, Finn Zulav uh, may come under pressure from Sasser, although it's unlikely because we are in to the last minute of racing, plus one lap. Uh -huh. We're looking again, and that is why Sasser getting a couple of wheels onto the gravel, and that shows exactly the invitation that uh, the number 31 car needed to come through and steal a position away. A rare mistake from young Hugo, I'd say. Uh, usually a very, very consistent uh, and quick driver, and he won't be happy with himself for that, but a top five finish still good. And uh, side by side for potentially 10th place. I said that uh, uh, Hendrick still would be trying his best to get into the top 10, and that's exactly what's happening. So Tom Wood in the uh, number six car coming under incredible pressure. Hendrick still another driver who is very experienced and uh, has uh, featured in GT Masters as well. Uh, would dread to think how many laps he's done around this circuit. Uh, he knows his way around. Look how far over uh, this battle is going. He switches to the outside. Wood goes to just shut him off into the corner they come. Henrik still uh, really giving it everything he's got to try and find a route past. <laughs> I think it's going to be harder uh, to do uh, than maybe we'd like. I think Still would love that top 10, but it's going to be very difficult to get past Wood in the number six. One of the rarest things you'll ever see on an ADAC GT4 weekend. And Aston Martin not entered uh, by the Dermot Motorsport entry. We do, of course, have a couple of teams, Pro Sport, uh, as well as that racing one number six car. And I tell you what, Zulaf isn't done, is he? He's closing in on the uh, Piro driven. Uh, Toyota Supra and uh, Gabrielle Djokova has she got in front of Falkenbach did I just see uh, wasn't too sure I just saw a quick glimpse there as we see the number two car getting a little bit off road that's Tim Reiter uh, we are into the absolute closing stage of this race and uh, this is potentially well that's one way of taking out the opposition drive through the billboard but no BMW does avoid the Audi and uh, <laughs> continues on its way we are focusing very much now on the number 69 car it's Indy Doncha at the wheel and he is about to start the last lap of the race. It has been an utterly dominant display from the Durham Motorsport Aston Martin Vantage in the hands of Indy Doncha and Phil Durr. You can see how much of a lead he has over Romain LaRue in the 007 car. That gap is 10 and a half seconds and uh, that uh, really is quite a gap for ADAC GT4. You don't often see people that far ahead. Uh, Cedric Pirro uh, behind them, uh, rounding out the podium places. Still, the uh, Gabriella Djokova and Robin Falkenbach battle continues. Djokova had got past, as we suspected, uh, but Falkenbach is uh, looking to take that position back. We are on the cl absolute closing stages of this race. Indy Doncha at the moment. Uh, let's just have a look where he is. He's out into the final throws of the final lap. And uh, very shortly, uh, we will be watching him across the line. But this battle for P6 feels like it's been raging on uh, for the majority of the race and uh, continues to rage and will continue to rage until they cross the line. Here he comes, Indy Doncha. He is in to turn 12 for the last time, heading up towards turn 13. A bit of dust goes flying out up towards the Zeppelin curve and out onto the pin straight is the number 69 of Indy Doncha for Dua Motorsport, who crosses the finish line to receive the checkered flag and win race one of the season for the ADAC GT for Germany. Second, making it a Dua Motorsport 1 2 007. That's Roman LaRue, uh, who partnered with Ben Dua.
And uh, that really is a dominant display from Dirt Motorsport. It's Cedric Pirro in third place. Finn Zulav, a really good drive from him. Uh, then Hugo Sasser in P5. Gabrielle Jakova. What a great job she did. And still they are fighting in the closing stages. Uh, Handka and uh, the 84 car of Ricardo Dort. It's Handka in front as they cross the line uh, to round up some thoroughly entertaining racing uh, here uh, at Oysterslöven. There's still a few more places to go. Henrik still uh, stays ahead of Tom Wood. No, Tom Wood drops behind Henrik still. Uh, there is the remnants of the uh, number 89 uh, KTM crossbow, Mato Pavlicek. Uh, flailing bodywork as it continues. And uh, here comes the uh, number 10 out of the corner, Michael von Zabienski, who shared with Patrick Steinmetz across the line. And uh, the rest of the field uh, continue. Wow, really entertaining stuff here. What a great way to start the season for the ADAC GT4 Germany. There is your race winner. It is Indy Doncha uh, sharing with Phil Durr in the Aston Martin Vantage GT4. Yeah, delightful job really, wasn't it, from uh, the uh, 69 crew. Big congratulations to Doncha and Durr. He's certainly adapted to that Aston well. Like I said, McLaren for his appearances last year, or at least certainly at the Saxon ring, he was in the McLaren and uh, he didn't quite match up to the guys at the very sharp end of the order, many of whom are still here, but this time he wins it. There is your classification, Phil Dorr and Indy Doncha for Dirt Motorsport, followed by Ben Dorr and uh, Roman LaRue. How many times have I just said Dorr? And that was for Dorr Motorsport as well. Marcel and Ed, Cedric Perrault rounding out the top three ahead of Nikolai Mollemanser and Finn Zulav, Mike David Orman and Hugo Sasser round out the top five ahead of Gabriello Gilkova and Robert Howe and Robin Falkenbach and Marcel Marchevitz, uh, who round out the top seven. Uh, the rest of the places scrolling through your screen. Uh, you have to say that uh, maybe for Dirt Motorsport, putting all of their eggs in one basket in terms of the Aston Martin route, all four cars, Aston Martins, um, that surely is uh, paying dividends because you're getting, you're just focusing on one manufacturer of car rather than running McLaren as well. Surely that is going to pay off if you do that. Yeah, data transfer uh, will be one uh, aspect that uh, is, you know, obviously massively beneficial when you've got that many cars, uh, that many hens to pick eggs from, as it were. Uh, it's hugely uh, positive. Some slow mos of Marcel Linares and Cedric Pirro's Toyota GR Supra GT4 uh, for Pirro Sports. Uh, second place, Ben Dur, Romain LaRue in the Aston Martin Vantage GT4. And uh, the winner of the first race of the season, Phil Dur and Indy Doncha uh, for Dur Motorsport, uh, another Aston Martin. So into Palm Ferme we come and uh, some uh, very relieved drivers. Uh, disappointed we didn't get to see Julian Hanses. Uh, we didn't get to see Mikhail Schrey. And uh, we didn't get to see uh, Nico Gruber. Uh, they're all drivers that uh, uh, they didn't, uh, their partners didn't uh, bring the car to the uh, pit stop and uh, therefore they didn't get a drive. But uh, we get two races in the weekend, so we get to do it all again tomorrow. Uh, congratulations there to uh, Indy Doncha from uh, Phil Durr. There you can see the uh, championship. It's a Doncha Durr at the top. LaRue, another Durr in second. Hero and Lanez in third. Thumbs up indeed, a, a good job done. Like they were conferring over something there, didn't they? And then Indy went, oh, and uh, ducked himself back into the cockpit. I don't know whether maybe uh, he left something on. Uh, interesting. It wasn't uh, Phil Durr, so, uh, no, it wasn't Indy Doncha saying to Phil Durr. The state of those tyres you handed over to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. Yes, well, of course, as you as you pointed out earlier in the day during the GT Masters, there's the opportunity for a, 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 a portion of revenge yeah. uh, in, in the yes. race next tomorrow. race tomorrow. Yes, yes so Indy Doncha will be qualifying that car tomorrow morning uh, for race two, which will take place tomorrow afternoon. And uh, it will be interesting to see how things go. I uh, should think there'll be celebrations in the uh, Dur motorhome tonight. 
of all sorts, but uh, not too many, please, because you've got to do it all again tomorrow. Uh, we're hoping that the weather forecast is uh, the same. The last time I looked here, we are due similar weather, uh, beautiful blue skies, which is a great result because when we turned up here yesterday, it was blooming cold and drizzling, and uh, it has been like that all week. Uh, but uh, the weather has turned the corner and uh, we have been provided with some great racing here this afternoon. So, uh, ooh, ooh, indeed, uh, that is uh, the 007 pilots, uh, Roman Leroux and Ben Dur. And uh, Roman Leroux, he, uh, both he and Ben are running for the junior championship. In terms of the junior championship, uh, the highest placed uh, junior finisher was Ben Dur and uh, Finn Zulauf in second, Hugo Sasser in third in the junior championship. Ben Dur has a bow tie on the clip of his race suit. Does he That's really? fabulous. I hope we show him on camera again. That's really quite funny. <laughs> I lost myself laughing uh, halfway through. Uh, I can work out if you're yawning or crying, but you were laughing. I was <laughs> laughing, yes. There we go. Confirmation of the point standings is Indy Dodger and Phil Dorr at the top with their 25 points that they uh, have scored for that race win. Romain Leroux and Ben Dorr uh, five points behind in second. Cedric Perrot and Marcel Inez uh, in third. And Finn Zulaf and Nikolai Moller Madsen 12 points adrift in fourth place. Hugo Sasser, Mike David Altman 14 points adrift. They'll be looking to make up for that tomorrow, as indeed will Gabriel Jakova and Robert Haub. Uh, there are the rest of the points scrolling through, but the significant points are that Gabriel Piana and Mikhail Shrey scored zilch, nothing, zero, no point, uh, because uh, they had the DNF, and that is very significant for a driver duo that have been pretty dominant in ADAC GT4 in recent times. Uh, there's the rest of the points scrolling through, and uh, uh, good job by Daniel Schwerfeld and Axel Sartingen uh, picking up a 15th place and one point for their efforts as well. So peace descends on the, the Oschersleber Motorsport Arena briefly and uh, very shortly the drivers will make their way up onto the podium. Uh, the lovely lake in the middle, uh, which uh, may have had or may not have had a uh, drone uh, floating on it at one point. Uh, it is a lovely setting here. It is so good to be here at Oschersleben. We, uh, it is the traditional place for the season to open as we look at uh, uh, the cars that uh, my dear colleague alongside me, uh, his eyes light up when he sees uh, these uh, classic cars coming out into the pit lane. And uh, uh, we have been entertained to some great entertainment here. It's been so good to see uh, spectators. Uh, the wonderful thing about the ADAC is the spectators get involved. They can meet the drivers. They can see the cars. Uh, they can experience all sorts of things. They can get really close. There's the tower that they can stand on to look across the arena. And of course, there's a circuit where which is, which is pretty unique because the spectators can stand and look down on the circuit. Uh, they're six to eight meters up above the track, a really unique vantage point. Uh, as we look at the podium and uh, the ceremony, Marcel Lanez and Cedric Piro uh, on the uh, bottom step of the podium, third place. Ben Dur and Romain Leroux on the second step. And here they come. Top step of the podium. Indy Doncha, a man not unfamiliar with the top seven podium, and uh, his colleague, Phil Dur. And uh, here we have a representative from Dur Motorsport. And uh, there's a team that have to work hard at the moment. Four cars, hats off for the uh, national anthem. <laughs>
Fokus auch auf die Pokale so, für unsere hats back on. So we get a second race tomorrow as uh, we uh, see uh, Gert Entner, the ADSA Sports President, uh, came in last year, of course, presenting the uh, winners' trophies. Uh, we have a second race tomorrow. Uh, then we head to the Red Bull Ring in May for round two. Yeah, that'll be in Austria, of course. Uh, then to Zandvoort, the uh, banked circuit there. Uh, Jürgen Heiker from the DMSB presenting trophies to second place. Uh, Zandvoort, 24th to 26th of June for round three. Round four, the legendary Nürburgring. Round five, the undulating Saxon Ring. And then the season closes at Hockenheim in October, 21st to 23rd of October as uh, we see third place receiving their trophies. There is an awful lot of racing to come between now and Hockenheim in October, and you just know it's going to be entertaining. It is the category that is growing like nobody's business, producing superstar drivers right, left and center, and entering to entertaining us along the way as well. It is the ADAC GT for Germany, and uh, their opening race of the season here from Austria Leben Motorsport Arena has entertained us uh, today. Champagne celebrations. It'll be qualifying tomorrow morning and then the race tomorrow afternoon, and it will be a race two of the championship. The question is will the domination of Dura Motorsport continue? Will Hope for Racing by Bonk Motorsport uh, step up to the plate and win this one? Who knows? Or could it be? Gabriel Jakova and Robert Howe, any number of drivers. This is a quality field of drivers. Many, many stars indeed. And they're all vying for the title of champion of ADAC GT for Germany. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.